<laughs> Just so you know, this is not the most comfortable setup for a podcast. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> After about 40 minutes, your butt starts to hurt. Uh, hey guys, welcome. Um, Crow's Nest Podcast, uh, we'll do a quick introduction. Black Belt uh, under Pedro Sauer via Keith Owen. Rest in peace, sir. Um, today I have Derek Mosier with me, and I'll let him introduce himself. All right, I'm Derek, um, uh, four stripe blue belt. Got to get ready for that brown belt test. Um, you said blue, dude. <laughs> did I say blue? <laughs> you said blue That's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> so this might be a fun one today. Uh, <laughs> uh, I've been doing jujitsu for about eight years as a hobbyist, so. So, good time. but for the record, four stripe purple. Purple. <laughs> He, sometimes purple belts start to feel like blue belts again. That's his, sub, his subliminal messaging coming out. <laughs> yeah. He is very much a four stripe purple belt. <laughs> and uh, quite frankly, a pain in the ass on the map. So <laughs> that's how I know that he's purple belt, not blue belt. <laughs> uh, how have you been? Pretty good. good. Pretty good. Yeah. Eight years, you said. Yeah. Time flies. It does, for sure. For sure. So can you give, can you give people... Uh, those who either know you or don't know you as well as I do, but mm -hmm. that may feel like they know you, can you give them kind of just a brief history on your training? Um, uh, because you've come before yep. um, and then yep. went away and then came back and, and you've been solid for the last eight years. But can you give people kind of a, a rundown on how what that looked like? Yeah. So it was uh, late 2000s and... One of my friends was like, hey, there's this uh, MMA gym, you know, and they have jujitsu. Do you want to go with me and check it out? And long time friend. And I was just like, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll go try it out with you and let's see what this is about. And I came down here and I really loved the jujitsu. Like, it was really cool. But I wasn't such a fan of the striking. And the more we started gloving up and sparring and I was like, yeah, you know, you know, man, that, that's not really for me. It's like, I love the jujitsu stuff, but the rest is it's just a little too much. So fast forward a few years, and then I hear through the grapevine that the jiu-jitsu's back. There's the gi, we're, we're not gloving up all the time. It's not guys who just want to beat on each other. And I was like, all right, all right, I'm in, I'm in. So I came down and I've been here ever since. And when you came back, so when you came the first time, uh, it was unnecessarily violent. Like it was just dumb, yep. wasn't it? And, yep. and, and Rob and I talked a little bit about this when he was on the show, but it was... It was not enjoyable. It, it was enjoyable if you were winning, if you were the yeah. guy that was doing yeah. the pounding on people. It was great. Right. But if you were somebody that came down to learn something, yeah, not you were not le not conducive for learning whatsoever. You were uh, you were helping other people that were already naturally better refine their technique by punching you in the face. Yep. And that's not that's not a healthy environment. It's not it's not a way to go. But the funny thing is is. Um, so when we say back in the old days, we have two versions of that. So back in the old days, because we've been around long enough to have uh, reiterations of our history, right? So yeah. back in the old days, um, you have folks that think about the MMA days, right? Um, and those are so far gone and removed <clears throat> that now, like when you refer to back in the old days, or oftentimes even when it comes up and I say it, um, unless I explicitly say the MMA days, what I'm referring to is when we had the walls and there was four of us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So That's... when MMA went away and we, we got back to the roots and we put the gi on and I hated the gi, but mm -hmm. I, I knew that it was a path toward structure and a mm -hmm. path toward um, a clientele that I, I would end up caring about. Right. So. Mm -hmm. When, when those days started, it was not wildly successful. It was two, three, four, four if we had a good night, yeah, right? Cool. Me and three other people. Yep. Me and four other people was like, oh, man, we've taken off. We've hit mm -hmm. it. Like, look <laughs> yeah. at us. Yeah. And it was like that for a long time. Yeah, that was several years of that. Yeah. We'd have guys, they'd come down, they'd check it out for a class, and they never, never, never came back. Yeah. Well, we'd have the guys who would just stop down and be like, oh, it's just four of you guys out in the cornfield. Like, I'm not coming back for this. Right. What's the point? What can I get out of this? Yeah. Yeah. And, and maybe deservedly so, right? Yeah. So, like, if we're, if we're going to be completely transparent and brutally honest, I mean, I was, I was a one-stripe blue belt when I put the gi back on. 
and going so many years blatantly ignoring it we mm -hmm. put it back on it was new to all of us it was like we were all white belts trying to figure out this this magical tool mm -hmm. that we're being told will help us right mm -hmm. so to have a very very small group of people to help get through those growing pains was nice yep. but we were all very different so if you think back and there's there's <laughs> a couple pictures that might reflect it but if you think back to the group that and i'm not going to name names yeah. but if you think back to the group that was here there would be four maybe five people including myself on the mat and each person like if you were to draw them was a completely different person, completely different body type, completely yep. different height, size, thickness. Like yep. it was, we did not have five dudes mm -hmm. that were trying to learn jujitsu. We had four or five people from literally every walk of life. Like we, it was, it was amazing for the small group that we had and the demographic that it covered. Yeah, it was pretty diverse. It was yeah. pretty diverse. It was crazy. But it was enjoyable. Yeah, it was. It was a lot it was, of fun. It was, yeah. um, I enjoy, I, I don't know what your take is on this, and I, I, I want to get your opinion, but I enjoy classes with three, four, five people. I feel like I can, I can see it in people's eyes when I hit something that they needed. Yeah. Uh, when I can see the light bulb go off, rather than looking at 20 people and seeing 18 people glazed over, right? Yeah. Um, I can, when you have two or three or there's those very small sessions, that's why I enjoy private so much because you can, you know, okay, they got that. That's, that's what they were looking for today. I just gave them something, a missing piece of the puzzle they were unaware of. Uh, not that I don't like classes with 20 people, they're great. Mm -hmm. they, they, that keeps the energy level high. That's mm -hmm. fun. But my energy level goes through the roof when I see people go, huh, what? That, wait, hold on. And it's like, yes. And we've done the same thing with instructors that you don't when, when Professor Owen would come, we, you and I did the same thing. And you mm -hmm. and I have been the, the highest ranked here forever now. Yeah, it's been a long and, time. And, you know, he'll show us something. He would show us something and we would go, well, and then Professor Sauer would come in and show us something. And it's like, why am I even doing jujitsu, right? Like, so when I get the opportunity to do that to a new rank and to a new white belt or even a new blue belt and watch their minds melt, it's mm -hmm. like, yes, <laughs> I... I impacted that person today. And that's awesome. Yep. I love that feeling. Um, you often teach for me when I'm out of town. Yep. You often take the reins of the school when I leave. And I, mm -hmm. I've traveled a lot this year. So thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for keeping mm -hmm. the, the ship afloat. <laughs> because uh, it's impossible to do um, without a backup. Right? And yep. unfortunately, we were both gone last week. Yeah, that was so a that little was, crazy. That's a first. <laughs> um, but tell me your favorite part about teaching. So I think one of my favorite parts about teaching is it helps me refine what I know. People are like, oh, you know, I, I feel like I'm taking from you a lot. If I just want you to show me stuff, you just want, I just want you to teach me. It's like they, if you've never taught someone, you don't really understand it. It helps refine in your mind. Mm -hmm. When you have to explain it, you have to formulate it in certain words. And if they're not quite getting it, and you have to figure out, how do I reformulate this again? How do I take that little bit of different view to maybe I can get it to line up so they get this message? Or, or judging on their body type, their physical attributes. How can I coach them through making this work for them? Yeah. And then when you do, and it, oftentimes, if you talk so much with people that don't realize, that don't teach, is oftentimes when we figure out like that one thing that you were missing, we didn't know it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like something we were setting on. It was we were able to figure out in the moment yeah. what you needed to do because we're sitting back looking at it, right? Yeah. Um, and people were like, man, why didn't you tell me that before? I didn't know you were struggling with that before, right? And yeah. It wasn't until you opened up and asked me, like, why isn't this working? And then we're able to kind of um, physically dissect it right. according to what their attributes are. And mm -hmm. then when it works out, it's like, wow, I kind of know jujitsu. That felt kind of <laughs> good, right? Yeah. Um, so that's the good side of teaching. And, mm -hmm. and when that happens, that's great. And it doesn't happen every class, obviously. Those, mm -hmm. are, those are pockets of genius mm -hmm. that are able to emerge if you teach enough. But I agree with you. Um, if you want to get better at jiu-jitsu, teach. If you want to get a better understanding of jiu-jitsu, teach. If you want to improve your game, teach. If you're the, one of the highest ranks down here, teach. It doesn't mean 
teach while the instructor's teaching, right? Mm -hmm. Right. right. <laughs> it doesn't mean hijack the lesson because you're over in the corner with a lower rank. Mm -hmm. But that's truly how you get better at jujitsu is mm -hmm. by teaching. That's how you that's how you gain an intimate relationship with the art itself. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of people hate it. A lot of people hate teaching. They want to get better, but right. they will come to class once a week and they don't teach and they're, they're doing everything they can to not get better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the easiest way to gain a better understanding is by teaching. Now, what's your least favorite part about teaching? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the things that's kind of a struggle with teaching is when you can see somebody who's so close, like they're so close to the breakthrough, but they don't have the confidence to keep trying. They, they kind of give up early. And it's like, no, you, you can do this. And they're like, no, 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 no. They've got excuses. It's, oh, my body doesn't move that way. Or, you know, this is just isn't for me. I'm too so, old. Yeah, I'm too old. Yeah. All the excuses, you know, yeah. they shut down. It's, it's kind of like, the, oh, I'll come to jujitsu when I lose weight kind right. of thing. Oh, it's when right. I'm in better shape. It's I'm like, get in shape first. Yeah, yeah it's my I'll, favorite. I'll, I'll come get better at jujitsu after I'm good at jujitsu. Right. It makes no sense. Yeah. And that yeah. kind of mentality, it's just like, no, I can't. It's like, you got to get out there and you got to fail. Like, yeah. come with me. Yeah. Like, I'm right here next to you. I'm holding your hand. Yep. Just come fail. Yeah, you're going to fall down. Like, that's how you learn. For years. Yeah, for years. It takes years. Yeah. The turnover is so high from a student body perspective because I think that oftentimes our love, the people that have been into it for a long time and that know nothing more than this is part of my life, our love for jujitsu oftentimes missells it. Like, I try to be completely honest. I'm try, I try to be completely transparent. Like, uh, Scott Bush, you know, yeah. he had contemplated coming down for a long time. And I'd given him hours of talks. Like, it's hard. Mm -hmm. You are not going to feel good about yourself. Your confidence level is going to plummet. Yeah. Um, I gave him all of, the, all of those prerequisite talks. Like don't this? There's gonna be a honeymoon period, and you're but you're gonna hate it, and you, you're not gonna be cut out for it, and everybody's better than you, and everybody's laughing at you, and you you just it's not worth it. But mm -hmm. if you stick with it, <laughs> like if you just get through the first, I would say two years, which sounds like a lot. People are like it's a two year commitment to get anywhere. Kinda. I mean, yeah. if, you, if you truly want to get good at something that's super hard. It, takes two, like you can't pick up a violin and six months later be really good at the violin yep right jiu-jitsu takes a long time yeah if to move like you're doing jiu-jitsu <laughs> yeah if if you're a big nerd like a big nerd i love reading i like the neuro neurology psychology type of stuff it's like there is a time aspect to learning like you can drill 12 hours a day but you can only learn so fast yep. that stuff gets there, there's a whole big thing you guys can look it up about when you sleep, what you've learned, how it gets put Processed, in neurologically. Yeah. It's like, it's a whole big thing. It's time. It's a time yeah. game. Yeah. And there's no shortcuts. No shortcuts. Yeah, there's, there's people selling, you know, systems and, and, and there's just a bunch of stuff out there. And it, I'm not doubting that any of it works. A lot of it does. Okay. But at the end of the day, the reality is you've got to be on the mat. Like you, you have to come down here. You have to. There's no way. What I'm trying to say is. You can maybe buy a system that's like, get good at jujitsu in 12 months or, or be a world champion in a year or whatever systems are out there. And, and I I'm guarantee at some point of taking serious, it's going to help you yeah. 100%. But you're not going to be able to avoid the ass kicking that comes with oh, it. No. You still no. have to jump through fire. Uh -huh. You still have to, to have the growing pains. That is, mm -hmm. you don't just come in here and hit the mat and be you can be naturally and athletically gifted you totally can you can be a great learner you still have to go through it because there's always somebody and the levels to this is deep even in the cornfields of white pigeon right the levels are still deep there's still many levels here so you come down here and you can have all of the physical attributes you can have the right mindset you can have it all you're still going to get choked on bar kimura like it's still going to happen a lot of people can't handle that. So give me, or give people listening, or people that have just started that maybe are struggling with that, give them your take on how to deal with that. How do you deal with getting your ass kicked and being motivated to come tomorrow? So I, I think back, it's like I vividly remember my first few weeks of jujitsu, which is kind of funny, yeah. thinking that it's been so long. Yeah. Is I came in here and my mindset was, I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna lose. I'm not gonna be a superstar. 
and my goal was just to hang on as long as I could. It's gotcha. like, I'm, I'm going to get choked. I'm going to be under the pressure. It's like, I always tap into pressure back then those first few weeks. It's like, well, I always tell everybody, oh, that's not a move. It's okay if you're uncomfortable, tap. Yeah. That's like, I did. Yeah, if you're about to panic, yeah. tap. It's okay. Yeah, this is like, take as much as I could. This is like, the great thing about jujitsu and the tap is you can go in the water as deep as you'd like and you can always come right back out. Yep. You just you just tap. Just so, tap. So it was just getting, it's really cliche, it is, it's like but getting comfortable with the uncomfortable. Yeah. And then the thing is to not stop doing that. Mm -hmm. I think after you're in for a year or two, you start to have that allure of I have my favorite moves. Mm -hmm. I don't have to get uncomfortable all the time. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm getting pretty good at jujitsu. And you stagnate because you quit putting yourself into yep. those positions. You, you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. When you about and it happens about two years in, you start to develop um, some sort of offense, right? Where now you can every once in a while you can occasionally make somebody uncomfortable, or occasionally get a submission, mm -hmm. and you know the people that you can get submissions on, and it's kind of like, yeah, all right. And then you start to chase that, and you don't realize how important it was to be the guy on bottom, right? Keith Owen yeah. would say, um, the lucky guy is the guy on bottom, yeah. right? And it took me a long time, like, where, what is, yeah, easy for you to say, pal. Yeah. You know, <laughs> fourth degree monster black belt, easy for you to say. It took me a long time, like I understood it, but it didn't resonate, yep. right? I am underneath everybody. Like, I, I don't care at all. I'm not competing with anybody. Right now I'm, I'm nursing, um, some shoulder issues that are going on, but I, dude, if I can roll with somebody your size, because mm -hmm. we're, we're very similar, I can roll with you and protect my shoulder the whole time, I don't care what else happened. I protected my shoulder the whole time. I'm like, yes, it's a victory, <laughs> right? And it, it feels good because I'm on top, or I'm on bottom. Like if I, can, if I allow myself to be on bottom and I can keep it safe and come out of it okay, dude, that's a pretty good day for me. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to win a trophy or, I'm definitely not trying to prove anything to anybody down here. It doesn't matter to me. But we've seen the people that do. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. We've seen the guys that come in here and they're like, no, I'm, I'm not that guy. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to be a bitch. Mm -hmm. You're going to see how good I am. Do you, do you think there's a correlation, and I, I have my opinion on this, but mm -hmm. do you think there's a correlation between those people and the dropout rate? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's... <laughs> men are our own worst enemy. We, we are our own worst enemy. When I started jujitsu, um, I've talked about this on here before. I was a second degree black belt in Taekwondo. So when I started jujitsu, I was already tough. So when I went down, it was like, you guys need to know before we grapple, <laughs> I'm a second degree black belt. And they were kind of like, we don't give a damn, dude. We don't care what you are. And it was like, I'm just letting you know. And I, I paid for that dearly for, man, the first couple of years, it was like, dude, you, when are you going to accept that as you drive home and you're, you're second guessing all of your life choices and you don't know why everything hurts, when are you going to accept the fact that you're not good at this? <laughs> right? I, had to, I had to do a lot of digging deep down inside in my manhood and go, all right, there's only one way for me to get better and that's I have to accept that second degree black belt that's hanging up on the wall over there, it did, it's doing nothing for me here. It's doing nothing for me. And some guys never get there. They come down, they're pretty athletic, they do okay, they throw, throw a couple of low ranks or smaller people around, and then they go with, with bigger, more experienced people. Mm -hmm. Does it quite fit the agenda that they mm -hmm. wanted it to fit? And then very, you know, five, six classes and they're gone. Yep. And, and that's, um, that's a damn shame. Because those are the guys that you would love to have as long-term training partners just to see how far they can take it, yep. right? There's nothing, nothing more devastating to a long-time jiu-jitsu practitioner when you watch somebody come in here and you go, man, give that person two years. Holy cow. Two years, oh, I'm not going to want to roll with that person. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to because in five classes you're quitting anyway. <laughs> it's like, oh. What is going on? Yeah. So, and we've seen a lot of that over, and, and, and you over your eight years, you've seen a lot of that. Yeah. You've seen a lot of people come, f do decent, fail, and then never come back. Yep. So in your 
going off of that and going mm -hmm. off of the the multiple types of personalities, body types, mm -hmm. ages, um, across all of the categories of people that come in here to try jiu-jitsu out, what's the perfect fit? Who are the people that you hope stick around? I think that the biggest thing is the people that have they have a real purpose of being here. It's not just, I want to be the best guy in the room and this is another place for me to be the best guy in the room. Those are the ones who typically, they can't handle it and they don't end up sticking around. It's the people who come and they want something to learn or they have a particular thing they want to get out of it. So we have, you know, we have the guys that come down and they're like, I'm, I'm here for self-defense. Like that sport thing is cool, but all I'm really worried about is a drunk guy in the bar kicking my ass. Right. And it's like, if they come down and they have a purpose, they know why they're here. Some guys, even if it's just fun, like, that's cool. You yeah. like to come down and have fun? Even, yeah. even that's great. Mm -hmm. But it, know why you're here and, right. and be present when you're here. Yeah, and that's, the, that's the a big thing. one. Yeah. That's a, you just touched. That's good. Um, that is a big one. You have to, you have to be willing to leave your, your, the stress of your job, the stress of maybe your spouse, that damn thing that the kid did earlier this week. You have to be able to leave that stuff at the door. Because if not, and you're here and your brain is running through everything, this is already hard enough. This should be your outlet to momentarily forget about all that stuff. And if not, the, the learning curve becomes that much steeper. And it's, it's, all, it's already impossible to learn, right? <laughs> We've all learned this much. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry. So when you when you come in here and your brain is fogged with the stresses of adulthood, dude, it's so that's a, that's a really good a really good point to bring up is the is the present part because I think that I can tell like when I'm teaching, I can I'll make eye contact with people, and I can I know who's here, and who's just here. I know who's physically here. And who's mentally here um, and it saddens me not that I can do anything about it I can try to be more more of an engaging instructor I can try to make it more comically sound I can, you know what I mean yeah but in the long run a lot of that falls on their shoulders um, some people just use it as an outlet right they just want to yeah. come down and break a sweat and roll around and do so knowing that they're doing so safely and that, that yeah. they're in a room full of people that aren't going to maliciously hurt them. And that's fine. That's okay. Um, not everybody has the same motivation to learn or to climb through the ranks. And that's all right. Um, but you're right. Being present is a, it's, it's, it's a big one. And we don't talk about that. But it's so obvious when it happens. It's mm -hmm. like, man. And, and to be honest, as an instructor, sometimes I'm not here. You know what I mean? Sometimes mm -hmm. it's like, we're going to run through this. I'm exhausted. I slept like shit last night. I feel a cold, a head cold coming up. You know, something. Yep, yep. We all get those days. You know, and we're, we're thinking about what's going on tomorrow, and it's like I just want to get. I just want to get to the part where we roll, so I can get home. And, and and so I'm not. I'm not oblivious to the fact that you know I'm not. They're not the only ones that do it. Sometimes it just happens. Um, but but it all it all it's all beneficial. So if you come down here and you, even if you're not in the right mental state, this might snap you into it. Right? Are you having that horrible day that you can't shake and then after yeah. you roll you go, "I'm good." That that shit's still happening, but that's what I needed to help me get through it. So it's still beneficial. So I'm what I'm I don't want people to think like, "Oh, if you're not mentally there, don't come." Well, you should still come because that could that could easily help realign your mentality. And help refocus your worldview, and um, I think a lot of people use maybe stress, their job, fatigue, whatever it happens to be, as a reason not to come. Right. And on those days, are the most important days that you should come. Absolutely. The Absolutely. day that I wake up feeling like a world champion, and I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna, I got all the stuff I've been working on, <laughs> even as a black belt. I've got the stuff I'm working on. I'm gonna show you guys. Those are the days where I'm like, damn, dude, people, everybody mad at me? Like, my God, I'm just getting destroyed today. Like, what is going on right now? The days where I'm like, oh, if we lost power and we had a power outage and we couldn't have class, I would be okay. <laughs> Those days are the days where it's like, whoa, I kind of know jujitsu. I kind of feel like I'm doing something here. Yeah. So it's it's comical to me that. 
um, it works. It works so backwards from the way that we think it's going to work. Absolutely. And it's often. Yeah. There's there's a little exercise I would I would challenge people to try because I did try this. Um, make a little chart. Do a little checkbox. The first column is, do I want to go to jujitsu? Yes or no. And the second column is, I regretted going to jujitsu. Yes or no. Right. Right. There's a few in those. I don't want to go. There was never any. I regretted it. Right. That's a good way of looking at it. That's a. That's something that everybody should have on their fridge. That's a. That's a. Real, especially like white, blue, and purple. Mm -hmm. Like you get the brown. It's like shame on you if you don't go. You're that close. But like white, blue, and purple, you all have things that that you know are next. You know what I mean? And and those those regrettable days i don't dude I've, i don't know the last time i regretted coming to jiu-jitsu i'm like so I, you and i were gone last week yeah. how awesome did you feel today oh yeah dude yeah, right way better yeah i had a week off came back and like my body was craving jiu-jitsu and i couldn't wait like i woke up early this morning had my coffee it's like let's go let's do this um and i felt great rolling even with you know my shoulder issues and 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 traveling and, and the whole still this is exactly what i needed to start my weekend off it's saturday by the way we just had yeah. open mat yeah. um and it felt phenomenal it felt great I, I can't imagine like the week i just had very long days um bunch of traveling uh in and out of airports for you know eight hours a day um doing all of that coming home waking up on saturday and not having something to go like to jiu jitsu, not having that. Mm -hmm. Like if I would have skipped today, I would have had to wait till the next class. Holy God, I'd have been grouchy, dude. Yeah. Same. I'd have been a piece of shit. It would have been bad. <laughs> yeah. And then then on the flip side too, about regret and going to class. That doesn't mean that you don't come in here sometimes and get beat down and you walk out of For here sure. like, oh man, I, I got crushed. I'm, I'm not talking about that. Yeah. It's how do you look at that? So like there's times where I come down and I try some stuff. I put myself in some bad situations. I'm like, man, why couldn't I get out of that? Like, yeah. I, I feel like I should have been able to handle that situation. It opened my eyes to the fact that that's an area I need to work on. Right. I, I have a takeaway from that. Yeah. And if I wouldn't have came down and got beat up that day, I wouldn't know that I had that hole that I needed to fill. Mm -hmm. And it could have surprised me some other time. Later at a more important mm -hmm. time. Yeah. <laughs> a more crucial time. Yeah, yeah, at a much more crucial um, time. So do you think that... And this is not making fun of any belt color. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's even possible at blue? Mm. Across the board. I, I think that it, it's probably a little trickier. I think it is something that kind of comes with that mad experience and you start to get, you're starting to come into that wisdom a little bit sure. with your experience. Sure. Because there is, there's definitely that component because it's not just a what you can learn, it's what you can apply kind of thing. Yeah. So it's that. And appreciating the identified gap, right? Yep. Like white belts, they don't even know that they're just a gap. Yep. Everything about them is just gapped. <laughs> um, oftentimes at blue, like early blue, they still feel like a white belt. So they know there's some stuff missing. But like third or fourth stripe, it's like they're starting to, to really get control of their body and how they mm -hmm. roll. And they, they're starting to understand what they like to do. Mm -hmm. but they understand what they like to do offensively. They're not necessarily, I, I feel, they're not necessarily able to, to unless they make a, a true conscious effort to identify it, journal, write it down, to identify like, okay, I'm, dude, there's a pattern here. Not just with one person, there's a pattern for me in this position. Yeah. But I think at purple belt, sometimes it's obvious. You're rolling as a purple belt, and it's like, I gotta either stay out of this position, or I've gotta find a way to combat it. Right. Mm -hmm. And purple belts, I think, have a much easier time going, OK, I'm not I'm no longer really competing. Like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm trying to deep dive and dissect my game. And this part of my game sucks because I know I know it sucks because I suck there. Mm -hmm. So I need to do something about it. So I think there's blue belts that can do it. I just think that it's more prominent, probably at purple, you know, and then and, and I'm going to tell you for your next step. Um, <laughs> I can tell you what's good. Hopefully it, it doesn't happen. You go brown and um, you realize you don't know any jujitsu because after you're, you're staring down like that, the, the light at the end of the tunnel yeah. is probably a little brighter than it was at purple and you start doubting everything you've ever done. Yeah. 
So a purple belt, you know, a blue belt, you have the blue belt blues. A purple belt, you'll start to, like, second guess yourself. It's just like, eh, you kind of work through it. You'll get to brown and go, I am 15 years away from being able to go black. <laughs> and you'll, you'll doubt yourself more at brown than you will, will anywhere else. It, it's really a weird, it's a weird belt. Um, so I'm trying to warn you. <laughs> right? Appreciate it. Because it is very much... Uh, it, it's a mind melt. It's like, man, I can't. What people are talking about, asking me when I'm going to go black. I don't know. I feel like I should go back to blue. What are you talking about? That's the beauty of it, yeah. of jujitsu and how it, it demasculates you. Sometimes <laughs> it pulls away your ego and it's like, yeah. come here, little boy. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, um, it's such a unique tool in keeping guys in check, yeah. which is why I feel all guys should do it. That it, it would control road rage incidents. It would control workplace <laughs> violence. It would control that mishap in the Walmart parking lot. It would control all of them because yeah. you don't know what people are capable of. Um, I, th I find it comical. That's uh, it's an interesting concept. So like that even transcends jujitsu. So a, a few people have probably heard me talk about this before. There's what they call the levels of competence. So yep. when so when you start, you have unconscious incompetence. Yep. You don't even realize that you're incompetent and yep. in what you don't know. That was me. Yeah. And then once you kind of get to be a blue belt, you start to get a little taste. You start to see a little bit and you evolve into conscious incompetence. Yes. You know there's something there that you don't know and that you need to know it. And then the third level to this is conscious competence where you can do a thing, but it takes all of your focus to do it. You right. have to be dead focused on what you're doing. Yeah. And eventually you reach the fourth and final level, which is unconscious competence, sure. where you can do it without thinking about it. It's unrehearsed, like this, boom, on the spot, you can produce it. Yep. And yep. That's, that's what we're all striving for. Yep, absolutely. At some level. Yep. Right? Even, even if that, that level comes with just training part, like, it, oh, heaven forbid, it happens outside of here, right? But, like, mm -hmm. that's all we're hoping for, is yep. to move reactively in a smooth, safe manner and be able to pull off this thing that we love. Yeah, you know, absolutely. It's um, it's just the the conundrum that is jujitsu is is um, so overwhelming and um, just beautiful all at the same time. Um, and it saddens me when people come down, try it out, and they don't get a chance to see the beauty. They come down, yeah. they see the sweat, the the cross face rug burns, the <laughs> the you know, and they they see like. I'm just, I'm leaving here. My neck hurts. I've got, I feel like somebody punched me in the eye and they didn't, but it feels like it. And my knee hurts. And it's like, that was all you, dude. Yeah. Like it was because the person you were going with was trying to keep you safe, but you look like you were on fire underwater. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't control your body, you know? Um, so it's just, it's just, it's the biggest message that I, that I try to convey to people um, that that are contemplating coming down is is I, you know I try to let them know that um, you everything you think you know about your manhood uh, is going to be tested, challenged, and proved wrong. Like you come down here and try this, it doesn't matter how much of a man, it doesn't matter what your background was. I played football and I don't give a shit. It yep. does not matter. It might help you initially for a very short period of time, but eventually you're going to have to look yourself in the mirror and go, okay. I got to make a decision. Do I do this and actually try to get somewhere with it? Or do I not do this? Do I see the benefits or is it just not worth it for me? Right. Um, and unfortunately the, the art is still in its infancy. So we don't, the turnover rates just, it's still too high for me. So what do you think we can do to help? Cause we're very selective yes. as a school owner. I'm very selective in who I let come in here. So that's probably part like i could open it up and we could have way more people and, and thank you for keeping you're, it that way you're welcome really appreciate it you're welcome because we've had it that way and we've seen what that does yes what can we do though as high ranks when we do get the people in here to to help facilitate building that relationship and and help them see how easy it is to love this how can we help student retention that's the question I think one of the big things when it comes to keeping people in here is learn their names. <laughs> if you're one of those people, you're like, oh, I'm just really bad with names. 
get good at remembering <laughs> their names. I, 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 I like to use that excuse too. Yeah. It's like, oh, and I'm just bad with names. If you go into a place and you come back the next time and nobody remembers who you are, you don't feel very welcome. Yeah. And the, our new people here, they need to feel welcome. They yeah. need to feel like this is a place they want to come to. Aside from all the technique, it could be the most technical thing in the world. But if this is not a welcoming environment, they're not going to come back yeah. to take what we have to teach them. Yeah. They have to feel like you want them to be here. Mm -hmm. They're welcome to be here mm -hmm. and that you enjoy and appreciate them being here. Yeah, I agree. Mm. I totally agree. Um, it's something as little as that. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, it's, just that little. Um, no, so I hope you guys are listening because that's, that's, a, that's a good part. Um, I think what we do a good job with is like when somebody comes in, you guys will oftentimes will leave the mat and come greet them. Hey, man, how's it going? Or, or if you come in after the new person's here, there's a lot of, uh, they'll come up, hey, how's it going, blah, 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 blah. And even when there's names exchanged there, by the end of class, it's gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but so yeah, good, no, that's good advice. Um, what, how else have you been? Like your training, so you've been, you've been, I don't want to say riddled with injuries, because you, you haven't, but you, you had some sciatic stuff, you had surgery for that. Yeah, I had surgery on the back. How's that going? So it's going pretty good, and it's, it's interesting because it's pretty easy to say, oh, well, there's things I can't do be because of that, yeah. rather than find out what can I do to work around that? Yeah. How can I work around this impediment that I have, whatever mm -hmm. it may be? Mm -hmm. um, so I actually used it as an opportunity to sharpen some other parts of my jujitsu. It's like, okay, I have to watch the leg. I have to be careful with my back. It limits what I can do, but I have to focus on some other things that maybe I wasn't so focused on before sure. because... I could rely on the strength of my right leg all mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I didn't have to worry about straining my back mm -hmm. and all of that. So Cause you, you were like three limbed for a while. Yeah. You just had a dead appendage. Yeah. It just is, is, yeah. <laughs> Literally kind of like there. Pinky. You just, <laughs> yeah, it was useless. Yeah. Yeah. And that, you know, um, statistically you should have quit. Oh yeah, definitely. definitely. Or that was the thing. And that's what happens with a lot of jujitsu practitioners is they run into that first serious issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was surgical. Yep. That first serious issue, and they're like, I don't know if I want to continue my life like this, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, was that injury or was that issue related to jujitsu? No, no, it really wasn't, which is the most hilarious thing. Yeah. It was, uh, I was lifting a dog, my, my dog's 80 pounds, I was trying to load him into the back of the SUV to go to the vet. I decided that I wanted him to go, but he decided that he didn't want to go. Difference of opinion. The difference of opinion. Yeah. So, I mean, 80 pounds is not the worst thing for me to lift as a big guy, <laughs> right. but when it's thrashing <laughs> and fighting back, it, yeah, it's, it's a bit much. Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. That's what set this whole thing in motion. Yeah. Because you fought sciatic forever. Yeah. Like your leg was, I mean, you'd lay in here and just stretch forever. Mm -hmm. It seems like, oh, and they're going to make it. Yeah. And I remember it was last year you had the surgery. Uh, it's no, about it's two years. About yeah, two yeah, years yeah. Yeah, it's I remember while. when you, when, I, I remember like the week before you were going in, I had like, man, I don't, I don't know if he's going to bounce back from this. I don't know if Derek's going to come back. And I, I said that. Yeah. I was yeah. like, I don't, this could be it. Because yeah. you just don't know. Right. You don't know what somebody's level of love and passion is for jujitsu versus I can live pain free, right? Because mm -hmm. in jujitsu, you, you have to live with a certain level of pain <laughs> the whole time, <laughs> yep. even if you're good. Yep. Something always kind of aches. Yep. So I was like, man, I don't know if he's going to do it. Do you think it's, it was easier to come back because you had dealt with the pain for so long prior to the surgery where you were just kind of like, I'm, all, I'm just used to hurting now. If this is going to get better, I might as well at least keep doing jujitsu. Or what was your motivation, I should say, to come back after the surgery? I think probably the big motivation there was to basically just not give up on my life because something happened. Mm. It was like jujitsu, something that I love to do. And even if I lose a whole leg, I'm still going to come down and do it. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not going to let that stop me from doing what I want to do. Like, it, we live in 2024, crazy times. It's like, People do amazing things. It's like there's really no barrier. There's a way around yeah. everything if you're willing to stick it out. Yeah. So how's the leg now? Pretty good. I mean, what I percentage? Just, it's uh, it's probably back maybe seventy five percent. It's like okay. it's pretty good. Like mobility's pretty decent. Good. Strength isn't really there quite yet. Yeah. But 
but yeah, and overall it's good, and it, it has changed my game a little bit. Yeah, it's been it's been cool, kind of adapting to it. And yeah, you'll talk to some people, and they'll be like, "Derek's like's fine." Like, yeah, they can't even notice a difference because I'm still doing crazy stuff. I'm still right. hook sweeping them, and the, right. they don't realize it's just not my right leg. That right, does it. <laughs> right. And that's why it's working because you're going opposite side. Yeah, like, he's still sweeping the hell out of me. It's <laughs> she's doing it to the side you're not used to defending. <laughs> but take that now, you guys know. Okay, mm-hmm. he just aired his dirty laundry. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, good. Um, did you have? And and I want you to be honest. Did you have a moment? like during before because it was a pretty uninvasive like it was it was outpatient right yeah, yep it was outpatient did you have any point during like the recovery because you were gone for 12 weeks it was mm, i don't think it was quite that long but it was a while i want to say it was more like two months yeah like okay two and a half because i remember when you told me when you were going to be clear and i thought and it was prior to the surgery and i thought there's no way there's no way he's going to have surgery, be gone for eight weeks or whatever it was, mm-hmm. and then come back. Statistically, that's not how it works. Yep. So did you have any moment during the process where you were like, no, nope, ain't doing it. I'm good. Or were you always determined, like, let's get through this shit so I can get back on the mat? I think there were probably short moments where I felt like, yeah, like there's... The hope was kind of gone a little bit. It was just like short stints, you know. It might be like a night or for a few hours, and it was just like. But I just think back to where I started and where I am now. Yeah. So it's like being so far in. It's just like my first week of jiu-jitsu, I thought, I'll never be able to do this. Yeah. I'll never be good at jiu-jitsu. It's, it's that same exact thing. It's just yeah. like, I'll never be able to do this. Like, I can't do it again. It's like, but you did it. It's you like, did it. I did yeah. the first time. I, right. learned, I learned to do it when before an injury. Yeah. I just kind of learned to do it a little different yeah. after an injury, after a setback. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Um, and I, I want to make it very clear. It's not like I didn't believe in you, right? That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I just knew that um, statistically the odds were against you. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Um, which is which is is great. It, it's, it's a testament to how valuable some people view that jujitsu is. Mm-hmm. Um, some people either get that or some people don't, mm-hmm. right? And even if you're training today, you might think, well, I, there's no surgery that would keep me out. Well, just wait. Your time's coming. Just wait. Mm-hmm. Like when something, the older you get, whether it's jujitsu related or not, yeah. just wait. Something's yeah. going to happen that's going to make you, like, if you're one of those people that you go, man, there's Doritos in the cupboard and the football game's on. I think I'm going to miss class. If you're one of those people, and Doritos in the football game kept you from coming to class, wait till you have to have a surgery. Yeah. Right? Like, if that was enough to entice you to miss, wait. Like, don't talk shit <laughs> until you've been through some shit physical, <laughs> some, some serious injuries when the Doritos already won. <laughs> don't think that you're, you're man enough and you love it enough to where you're, you'll never quit. Shut up. Because if you're already missing twice a week, Shut up! You don't have an opinion on this, um, but and I think it's I think it's good for people to hear that because I've had surgeries, I've had I've had multiple injuries. I'm constantly complaining about things that hurt. Um, not all of it's jujitsu related. My pinky, you know, when I had my hand surgery, that was jujitsu related. Um, but I, I don't think that a lot of what hurts me is jujitsu related. It's just me getting older and my body feeling the wear and tear. Um, I'll be over here until you guys tell me you no longer want me here, which is kind of messed up if you vote me out of my own school. But I'll be over here until you guys are done with me or until um, I need help getting through the door, right? Yeah. Like that's, jujitsu is my life. It's not just a part of my identity. I have to have it. Right. It's, it's uh, you know, we just went a week without it. I had one thing I wanted to do when I got home. That was jujitsu. I got home like 11 o'clock last night. There was nobody to jujitsu with. Yeah. So it was like, oh, I need to get to bed. Jujitsu's in the morning. Cause it, just, it brings a different level of happiness and camaraderie. The camaraderie oh, that we yes. have so is, I think it's so important for guys. Yeah. Anybody, but guys. Yep. Um, talk to me about that camaraderie and if it's impacted the way that you view class, training partner, anything that comes along with camaraderie, how important is that at a club? And why is it so effective here? Oh, it, it, it's, it's probably above all else. Yeah. I mean, you can go to a school where the technique kind of sucks. Yeah. Like where 
maybe everybody's kind of a know nothing. Yeah. But if you're willing to have that group kind of feeling where it's like it feels like a comfortable place to be, you guys can come down and you can work through things. Like it's yeah, it's like totally imperative to have yeah. that camaraderie and to make friends at jujitsu because if you're just trying to kind of be the lone guy, like oh yeah, I like to just study on my own and then I'm going to try to come in and do stuff and you don't have somebody to help you work through techniques. You don't have those favorite training partners. You don't have those guys that if you broke down on the side of the road to two blocks from class, you'd call them up right away and they'd be there in a heartbeat. Right, right. Like if you don't have those guys, it makes it incredibly difficult to be down here. And we have a telegram group that we all keep, you know, that's how we uh, maintain updates and all that good stuff. I often say, that we have a mat full of people that will come help you change a tire. Yep. It's the it's the coolest environment in that way. And we've all helped we've helped each other out at projects on our homes. Like we've yeah. went to we've we've we literally put out a call for help and three or four dudes will show up and all right, let's get through this and you know, I used to heat with wood because we're out in the middle of nowhere. Like, how, yeah. many, how many times do we have 20 people out here stacking and chopping wood? Like, yeah, I remember. It's yep. like, what the heck? The old wood days. Yeah. So it's just, it's, um, I, th- I agree with you. Camaraderie is a, is a huge part of what we do. And I think that it has to be considering the art. Now, there, I had camaraderie in traditional martial arts as well, but it wasn't the same. I, I, I think that I had, it was more friends probably in traditional martial arts, but the camaraderie, it was there, but it's, it definitely wasn't as deep as it is here. Yep. Um, the, the camaraderie in jiu-jitsu, is, it's, a weird, it's a weird thing. And you have to put, I think it comes with, you have to put a lot of trust in people mm-hmm. um, for your well-being. You know, I'm gonna trust that you're gonna do something to me and vice versa, um, but we're still gonna compete. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're going to be close. It's going to be sweaty. It's going to be gross, right? Like we we have, but we but I trust that you're going to come in clean. I trust that you're yep. not going to come in sick. I trust that you're gonna, you know. It's, so there's there's a bunch of things that when compiled together, um, build this this unity of trust that that is needed in jujitsu. You can go to much bigger places and not have that camaraderie, Absolutely. and you can just be a number. You can just be a membership. Yep. Trust and respect. Oh yeah. man, it's number one. Yeah. It's so so important. It's a it's a very unique culture, mm-hmm. for sure. All right, um, let's. I want to do kind of a round robin with you. <laughs> Pick your brain a little bit. Um, you've seen the other ones, so you kind of understand yeah. where this is going to go. Yeah. Some of them will be repeat. Some of them will be different because you're Derek. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, gee or no gee. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm a totally a gi guy, but I would train no gi. If somebody was like, hey, Derek, I know we're always in the gi, but you know, I'd really like to try some no gi training. I'd totally train with you no gi. So nice. it's like, I lean towards gi, but I'm not a 100% anti no gi. Nice. Uh, favorite submission? Ooh. Right now, probably the triangle. Okay. <laughs> okay. It kind of ebbs and flows, doesn't it? It does ebb and flow. Especially at a purple belt. You kind of like your, your, um, your goals kind of change based on position, which would then give you whatever submission it is that you're looking for. So I get that. Triangles. Okay. You're kind of known as a leg lock guy. Yeah. You're yeah. kind of, you're kind of that dude that kind of like waits for somebody to throw a leg lock on them so you can throw your leg lock. So you're, you're so it's funny to hear you say triangle, but you're a tall guy. Yeah. So that makes sense for me. Um, I've been in your triangle. It sucks. Everything about it sucks. I hate it all. Um, and I've also been leg locked by you, and that sucks too. So, <laughs> um, okay. Um, uh, watching competition, gi or no gi? There's so little for like gi. It's right. like no gi has really caught fire in the past few years yeah. for competitions and what you can watch, like on flow and all of that. And it's like, it sucks to say it, but the gi guys just aren't as exciting. Yeah. Like they, they tend to kind of lock position and it's... Even to a gi practitioner. Yeah, it starts to, it starts to get a little stally and a little yeah. boring and it's like it's hard to get the excitement there. Sure. It's like... Sure. Um, what part of your game do you think needs the most development? Oof. Hmm. Sure, it's, it's tough. It's tough because it feels like there's so much. I think a lot of uh, open guard when my opponent is standing, I think is probably where my biggest hole is. 
that I don't get to experience a lot because not everybody down here stands up a lot to try to pass guards. Mm -hmm. Like it's more of a rare thing than a common yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, I think probably common kind of positions down here is probably mount attacks. I don't spend a lot of time in mount. I'm a bigger okay. guy. I try not to do that to smaller training partners. Yep. So. Okay. So top attacks, mount attacks, yep. specifically mount attacks. Okay. Um, favorite thing about jujitsu? Ooh, it's depth and complexity. Yeah. There's so much to learn. It's it doesn't it doesn't get stale for me because there's so much depth and there's so much yeah. variance. Like you could try your whole life and not master all of it. Yeah, and we won't. And we won't. We'll never yeah. never master all. Yeah, of it. we're playing in a in a pond that's uh, infinitely deep, mm -hmm. uh, and we can only hope to skim the surface. <laughs> Uh, especially once you've seen the depth or you've seen uh, s certain depths, you're like, I'll never be that good, which is ultimately like you. That's what keeps me going. It's like, I'm never going to run out of stuff to fall in love with, with this. It's, it's awesome. Um, least favorite thing about jujitsu. Ooh, least favorite thing about jujitsu. Man. That is, that is a hard one it's because hard you, one. you never really think about it. Yeah. I think the the hard the thing that I dislike about jujitsu is, is not specific to jujitsu. It's just the time aspect. It's trying to carve out those chunks. Like it's it's difficult in modern life to carve out the chunk of time to come down and train. Family, especially train as much work, as you want to. But yep. Yeah, yeah. I think that's really the that's like the biggest thing. It's like oh man, I've got this house project that I'm right in the middle of, and I just need to get it done, and it's. Oh, but I need to go to class, and it's just trying to carve that out. And yeah, it's... yeah, I, I would agree. the The want is always bigger at our age. Mm -hmm. The want is always bigger than the achievable. Yes, like yes. we we constantly like I would go to class seven days a week. I would die. Yeah, my body would give out. Mm -hmm. But like, uh, how unfortunate are we that we didn't find it when we were twenty? Oh, right. like, can you imagine yeah. being 20 right now Oof. in the jiu-jitsu world? Oh, my Dude, gosh. Dude, watch out. Yeah. I'm training all day, every day. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> now it's like, well, that's not going to work so well for me. So I agree. That's, that's a rough one. And I think that anybody um, in our demographic has to feel that. Mm -hmm. they, they have to. Um, especially when you have kids and a life and all that other stuff. It, it definitely weighs in on you. Um, uh, what was, I had a really good question for the next one. So that one was your least favorite thing. Okay. Let's do, I'm trying not to copy everybody else's questions. <laughs> Let's do a best memory in jujitsu. Best memory in jujitsu. There's, oh, there's so many. What, it's funny, it's throwback. It, it's probably teaching. There's, there's been a few people who, some are still here, some are not. They see the light bulb like when they're struggling and you're trying to help them with something and they finally get it. Right. And you watch them pull it off or, or they remember those three little details that you helped them with and yeah. you watch them pull something off. Oh, and you're like, I've changed that person's life. Yeah. Like that's, that's mm -hmm. the best. Yep. It really is. You cannot put a price on that. Yeah. When you watch that happen, it's like, my God, they did jujitsu. It's like when you're watching people roll and you got new people, like the first six months you watch them, you're just like, oh, I'm just happy nobody's dying. Like, what the hell? And then like a year into it, you happen to just accidentally be watching them and you're like, that looks like jujitsu. What are they doing? Yeah. Like, holy cow, did anybody pay attention to this? Like, you, maybe you're late to the party. Like, does everybody already know? Like, this is happening. Wow, look at that. It's such a, it's such a cool thing to experience. Um, every time I talk and interject, I forget what my next question is. <laughs> oh. Give me your three favorite people to roll with. Oof. So, obviously you, because you kicked my ass. <laughs> you're, you're one of my favorite. I love yeah, rolling with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a great time. Um, there's, uh, I think the people who are my favorites are the people who I can flow with. Mm -hmm. So, um, Dylan and I typically get into good flows because the Legos fit pretty good size wise, yeah. like length of limbs and all Dude, of that. And I don't want to, I don't want to interrupt you. We'll, we'll get back to Dylan mm -hmm. in a minute. Uh, remind me to go back to Dylan after you mm -hmm. give me your three. Okay. okay. And then I think my, I think my last one is 
Probably Wendy yeah. because her game is just so different from everybody else. That's been a else's. common answer. It, yeah, it's just that... Especially among purple belts. Like, that, that's a very common answer. I'm the same way. I love yeah. it Wendy. Yeah. So, nothing to the rest of you guys. Love you all. <laughs> it's just she's doing something different. <laughs> yeah. Right? She's, she's going to do something nobody else is going to do. Yeah. I know she's not going to hurt me. She'll kick me in the face every once in a while. Like, I know she's not going to hurt me. So, like, it is... It's a very playful, like, whoa. How did we get here? Mm -hmm. That's a weird position. Like, hold on. Did you do it on purpose? You know? It's just, it's a different dynamic. So I agree with that. Um, going back to Dylan. Um, the last, I don't know, eight months, nine, nine months. months. It's been great roles with him. Yeah. Great. So if you listen to this, try not to get too big of a head. Yeah. <laughs> um, his, his grappling has changed. And this is what I attribute the great roles to. So early or late blue early purple like super early purple like first month um it, so late blue like late like second third fourth stripe blue and then like the first month of purple belt it was it was still very it wasn't rigid he was he's always been fluid you mm -hmm. know but it was like over committal he was um sometimes i'd get kneed in the face it just felt like the legos weren't working yeah and it was like eh, he's fun to roll with he, he offers different um different threats you know so it, it was it was fun but it wasn't like i i didn't truly enjoy it enjoy it it was just fun to roll with and um now it's a completely different person to roll with yeah like he doesn't commit to really like he'll throw something doesn't work he'll just keep going like he doesn't over commit and he's not malicious on anything because it's like he doesn't care if he gets the tap anymore and if you're listening to this and you're not a higher rank if you're a lower rank and it's different let me know because <laughs> i'm telling you he's he's probably one of my favorite roles because of that he just kind of goes with the flow he'll go he'll do something and be like ah oh, that didn't work shit he'll just he'll just go mm -hmm. and it's always it's always done um it's always well delivered you know mm -hmm. what i mean he's to me he's the perfect example of somebody who got the purple belt and then is growing into it yeah a lot of times because of our testing schedule down here a lot of times you get it and it's kind of overdue. Yeah, they're a little delayed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, to where he was the one that got it, and it was like, all right, let's see where this goes. And he grew right into it. And it was like, dude, you feel like a purple belt. You roll like a purple belt. This is really nice. So I don't know if I've ever told you that. So there you go, dude. I'm, I'm giving you compliments because he is truly, um, it's truly fun to roll with. And every once in a while, he'll turn it up a little bit, and uh, he'll give me the opportunity to turn it up. But he understands what's going on. He gets it. Like, he doesn't view it as malicious. You know, it, it's just, he's a, he's a really good... I've had a lot of other people tell me that. So to hear you say it, being the highest rank here, mm -hmm. to hear you come off and say it, it's like, yes, okay. The other people and me mm -hmm. that I've heard, and I've said this too, we're not crazy. Like, you're, you're feeling it as well. He's, he's a good time to roll with. Um, what else was there? What do you got for me? Do you have anything for me? I've been drilling you this whole time. Do you have anything for me? <laughs> So, now that you've been at Black Belt for more than a week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just over, I'm like 16, 17 months, yeah. Yeah. To you, what is the Black Belt mindset? Um, it's interesting because I got my Black Belt and it was the first belt that I got that I didn't feel like it was overdue. So even when I got my purple and brown, I felt overdue. Then I got my brown and I was like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. I got my black belt, but I didn't feel like it was overdue. Um, but I felt like I deserved it. Right? I had, I had done everything required to get it. I felt like I deserved it. Came back to the school, uh, started teaching. And, I, and I've always been confident because I've taught forever. You know, 17, 18 years of teaching this in some aspect or another. I felt like I felt like a black belt as teaching. I felt like um, I felt like I was rolling like a black belt. Um, it, it was it was a weird mentality to come back here as a black belt. And then I went to a black belt get together, and I realized I'm a fresh black belt. Mm -hmm. And I realized this in this world of black belts that I was in with this black belt get together, I was essentially a white belt. Yeah. You know, I was the newest black belt there. Yeah. Like there was only a handful of non-degreed black belts. 
So to go there and and literally get ragdolled, just get thrown around and destroyed and have to survive all weekend, um, I realized, okay, I need to take a step back and um, not, not refocus, but um, I need to find the things that I do well and I need to figure out why I'm doing them well. So the black belt mentality to me is, and, it, and this is just to me, it's specific to how I train and think, is I knew there was a, a handful of techniques uh, that, that I, I did well, but I couldn't figure out why I was doing them well. I couldn't figure out why they worked why and why it worked on everybody, whether they were big, small, short, tall, um, why they worked. And when I, when I started to dissect my own game and figured out, and I and have to, it took weeks and, and now months, you know, for 17, 16, 17 months into the black belt journey, as I would dissect them, I would have to abandon everything in the role, essentially become the, you know, hammer or nail. I'd become the nail for that round, but figure it out and be able to, to, okay, this is why it's working. I started to do that with everything that I did, even the things that I didn't do well. So I took the things I did well, why did that work? Put them under a microscope. Okay, now here's the things I don't do well, but I love. You know, I love doing these things, but I can only do them to white and blues. Why is that? That's the process that I'm in now. So that deep, deep discovery and that deep, deep diagnosis of why I suck at certain things. And, and here's the key for me, not looking at outside resources. Like be man enough to go, this isn't working because of this. I love it. I know, I know every aspect about this technique. Why can't I land it on anybody but a white or a blue belt, right? Mm -hmm. That's where I'm at. Um, and I think that as a black belt, you have to be comfortable enough and confident enough to go, okay, I'm a black belt. It's, it's time to shore up some of the basics. It's time to, you know, this, this shit that should have been taken care of years ago, but I'm comfortable enough within my skill set to go, okay, it's, I have to fix this. I have to now refine this. And um, I've got such an awesome group, we have such an awesome group of people down here where I can do that and then simultaneously get my ass kicked, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I can spend the entire role trying to fix something or trying to analyze it while just getting stopped uh, and come out okay, come out okay. So the black belt mindset to me is really, this is cliche as it gets, dude. It's um, the journey starts at black. It truly does. And I used to hate it when people said, when I would read the memes and people mm. would say that. It's like, shut up. You know, but truly the black belt is the longest belt that you'll hold. Unless you get it when you're 85, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> the, yep. the longest color that you'll have is the black belt. The rest of them seems like forever, but you're yeah. going to have black and you're going to have it for till you're done. Um, with the handful of people that make it to coral, it's still a black belt. Yeah. You're... So for me, it, it's that. It's, it's the, the black belt mentality. Is, I, I have so much stuff yet to perfect. I don't have to look for anything else because I have so much ironing over here to do mm -hmm. that I never, I, I never looked at it at purple or brown like that. Purple or brown, I was still seeking new stuff. Mm -hmm. I needed the latest, greatest. I needed that trick. I mm -hmm. needed that shortcut. I needed all of that. I don't need any of that now. That's not what I'm looking for. And I'm able to stumble across stuff. And I, I've been showing a lot of it to certain people. I, I do it to Rob often. I'll do something and go, dude, did you notice that? Did you know? Because mm -hmm. he's, um, he's very flowy. Mm -hmm. So I'll go, did you notice that? Like my knee was here. That's why that didn't work. I won't point it out until I've seen that it worked on him three or four times. And then it's mm -hmm. like, oh my God, this is not an accident. You know what I mean? So I'm able to, and it's been, for me right now, the learning curve of black is that as a white belt. You know, when you come in as a white belt and everything's mm -hmm. new, it's all mm -hmm. magical. Mm -hmm. um, and that gets you through some of the growing pains. That's where I'm at as a black belt. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going through stuff that's so minuscule and tiny that it's just like, oh, it's exciting me to come mm -hmm. over, um, which is fun. And I, and I didn't do so on purpose. I've just, I kind of, I kind of um, stumbled into it. And I don't know if that's a natural progression as black or that's, that's normal when you get your black belt, but you may say that it's, it all starts over. Dude, it does. It really does. 
I like that you answered my second question no. with your answer to the first. So that's how do you apply the white belt mindset as black belt? Right sure. there, he just told you. For sure. It's the the day you think you're done learning, just quit jujitsu. Just quit. Like I I am metaphorically teaching myself so much every class. Or somebody will do something to me and I'll go, that's that was highly effective. That should not have been effective on me. That was effective. And I'll watch that tendency. So I study tendencies. Mm -hmm. I'll study patterns. So I'll watch that tendency from that person the next two or three times we roll. And like the third or fourth time that happens again, like I'm looking for it and I'm like, holy cow. Like much like you, mm -hmm. I've identified a gap. I have to do something about this. That's, and I become so thankful. Mm -hmm. Like as a purple belt, I've just been like, oh, I'm tired of getting caught in that. Right? Or as a brown mm -hmm. belt, I've been like, I'm going to show you why I'm almost a black. As a black belt, I'm like, oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. You've just exposed a hole. Mm -hmm. I have to. And it might take months. There's a lot of holes I'm still fixing. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, dude, I owe you. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. <laughs> so it's, um, it's truly exciting, dude. I'm, like I said, I'm learning more. The, the learning curve feels the same at black as it does at white, which I know may be hard for some people to get their head around, but it truly is. It's awesome. The thing I want to take a second to point out for newer people is notice how little we've focused on winning and losing when it comes to training. Isn't it weird? Yeah. We, we, we don't care about that. It's, it's the learning. It's, if you come down here and you're like, I love jujitsu because I can go down there and I can win, and I only have good nights when I win, and you're just coming down to compete, it's training. It's not a competition down yeah. here. You have to learn to appreciate jujitsu for what works and what doesn't work. And your time here is will be short. Yeah, yeah. If you you're if you only focus on the winning and losing, yeah, you won't last through it. Nope, nope. It's a weird mindset to appreciate the losing. Yeah, um, I can't. I can't. And honestly, the last time I uh, looked at jujitsu like competing was in May days mm -hmm. or when I first started, and that was just because I was counting all the losses. Yeah. Right, it was every day was a loss. Yeah. I was unable to appreciate the losses. Um, it's so it's it's yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's nuts. Yeah. So fun fact for people who don't know, I've competed twice. Yep, I believe twice. Yep. I didn't score a point. Yeah, either Any, competition. Either competition, never scored a point. Yeah. And I'm still here. You're still here. It, it, it won't kill you. No. You, you don't have to be scared of the losing. It's, no. It's it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Um, I competed early, and so white and blue belt, I competed uh, often at white and blue. But I, got, I did, like, I, the, the competition scene in jiu-jitsu is awesome just because everybody's so awesome. Yeah. Everybody's so oh, friendly. Man, it's, it's so like, great. You, you literally make friends at, with the people you're going to compete against. It's just crazy. Yeah, and the, the people who aren't friendly, everybody's looking at them like, What's yeah, wrong with what's you? What's wrong with this guy? Must like, a, what, what's your problem? Must be a judo guy or something. <laughs> 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 like, it's it's so weird. The jujitsu culture is beyond unique. Beyond unique. What else you got, dude? You got so, let's. I mean, we're at, we're over an hour now. Yeah. So. And I I told myself um, when we set out to after the last two, I told myself like forty five minutes was a cut off. Yeah. I didn't realize we were out. Maybe mm -hmm. I should start sitting on that side so it's I can watch the. <laughs> yeah. My goodness. <laughs> So I think a uh, final question for you is, what's your worst jujitsu memory? And would you erase it if you had the choice? Ooh. Um, I feel like you know what it is. And no, I would not. So um, if I could undo it and have the event not happen, then clearly, right? That's, right. that's obvious. But I, would, I definitely wouldn't erase the memory because that memory, so my, let me clarify for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about. Um, it's the passing of our professor, Keith Owen, right? Yeah. Uh, so up until that happened, while in Brazil, it was amazing. Like it was, it was a different level of amazing. The training was amazing. The atmosphere was amazing. The conversation was amazing. You literally can't score it on a scale of 1 to 10. Everything was amazing. Um, I would have to erase that to erase the fact mm -hmm. that he passed. Mm -hmm. And since I can't undo that he passed, 
If the passing still has to take place, that means I have to forget about everything that happened that same week. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't do that I, because I cherish those moments, right? And, yeah. and um, so unfortunately, I would have to, I would have to, I would have to say no, everything has to stay the way that it is, unfortunately, as unfortunate as it is. And, you know, if we would have done this podcast, I don't know, eight, nine, ten months ago, I wouldn't have been able to answer this question. Yeah. Um, it would have been it would have been way too hard it's still too real it's taken me a long time to get to the point where I can speak freely over it um, which is probably why we took so long to do this podcast um, but, <laughs> but so no unfortunately that's clearly the worst memory of anything jujitsu related that that I've mm -hmm. had um, it was tragic you know changed my life uh, he was not just a mentor but a father figure um, he was everything that not not just what the school needed but what i needed as well and the friendships that have been forged because of such a tragic event are unbelievable you know and he would be happy to see i think where we're at he would be happy to see how everything's come together and come along so no you know and i can't i i'm looking forward to going back to headquarters to his school um i just love it out there i love i love the the tribute that they pay to him every time they get on the mat you know you've seen it yeah the big yeah. mural of him I, on the I, wall yeah. it's just it's amazing so yeah. i can't i can't wait to get back out there uh, i love i love all those guys so yeah unfortunately that's the one yeah. um, but that's that's part of the journey that i've had you know and, and you guys have had as well the only difference was we were there Right. But you guys, you guys all had to live through that as well, and live through the uncertainty of what was going to yes, happen. Absolutely, you know, a lot of uncertainty. When I came back, it was like I don't. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. You know, I, I remember I put out the, the bullets and hey, come to class. We need to talk, right? Yeah. And everybody yeah. came to class, and it was like, all right. For those that aren't here, I'm not telling this story again. Mm -hmm. This is a one-time deal. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell everybody what happened. I'm not talking about it again. Yeah, give us. A I time. have no. Yeah, I have no answers for whatever questions you have. I don't know what this means for any of us, um, because he was our everything. Yeah, you know, and like so many people in the association that that are an affiliate of, of Team Rhino, he was the everything. Yeah. We are, we are, um, we're in a good spot right now. We got a couple people, uh, a handful of people, not just a couple, but a handful of people that are that are solid. And they're keeping it going, and they're mm -hmm. solid black belts, and they're they're of higher rank. And and you know the Pedro Sauer Association uh, took us under their arm yes. for as long as yeah. as long as long as we needed, and it's been amazing. Yeah. So yeah. Um, much gratitude to Pedro. For yeah, going into retirement, he put right. off retirement, put off retirement to make sure that our association would be okay. Mm -hmm. Like there's 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 no other people like that. Like that's a dying yeah. breed of man. Yeah. You know what and I mean? He's, that's a, a testament to the kind of friendships that are forged in jiu-jitsu. Exactly. That's a, a big, yeah. big indication of Pedro's friendship with Keith. Yes. And yeah. the respect that was there. And yeah. And, and vice versa when Keith was here, how highly he spoke of Pedro Sauer uh, and, and how that was his professor. That was his everything. And all uh, he would show us something and then he would go, that's because that's I'm a Pedro Sauer black belt. Yeah. Like, I remember the first time he said that, I was like, oh, that's good. But he never took credit. Yeah. Everything he did, he gave back to Professor Sauer. I think that's truly awesome. You don't get that in a lot of martial arts. And you don't get that in a lot of jiu-jitsu places. Right. But in our jiu-jitsu places, you get mm -hmm. that. Everybody points back to him. You know, and that's pretty cool. Um, so, good question. I knew that, that you tried to ask something deep at the end. <laughs> um, so, anything else? Are we wrapping her up? Um, calling it good. I, I this was right. very impromptu, so I thank you for sticking around after class. <laughs> yeah, just I asked him. Of... I said, "Hey, when are we doing this?" He goes, "Oh, today." Oh, I guess. Yeah, let's do it today. <laughs> um, good open mat. You enjoy yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fun. Yeah, I did. But that's good uh, stuff. but thank you to everybody who listens. You know, all members down here. Yeah, I appreciate all you guys. I love it when you come out and you spend time here. You spend time with me. I get to spend time with you. It's like. I always, always appreciate all of you, yeah. so thank you. And we, not everybody gets the opportunity to say that. Yeah. yeah you know, don't. I think it is, a, it is a, when we give you a hard time for not showing up, it's not because we're mad at you. We're mm -hmm. mad at you because you're ripping us off of time that we could spend with you. 
think about that for a minute. It's weird, right? Yeah. Um, so when you show up, we're truly happy that you chose to spend your evening with us. Yeah. That's the beauty of jujitsu. Yeah. It goes beyond cuddling. Listen, um, I don't know who we're going to have on next. Like I said, this one was very impromptu. And Derek, thank you for yeah, entertaining the, uh, the idea of doing this today. Um, yeah, that's all I got, buddy. You want to get out of here? Sweet. Yeah, let's go. We should turn the camera off and roll. <laughs> no way if you guys wonder what we're doing.